Okay, so look at the Fortnite early access at 21 by 9. PUBG certainly has a bit of competition here, but it's wrong to compare the two games too much, regardless of what the chatter of late has been. Fortnite provides a lot more than PUBG, and they only overlap in one of the two parts of the game. I am really enjoying Fortnite at the moment, and it's certainly a lovely game to add to the library, but before I go on, let's go over the ultra-wide support. So, Fortnite has native 21x9 support, but there is a problem, funnily enough the same problem that occurred with PUBG originally. The game doesn't scale the FOV correctly with the extra screen width, and so the image is too zoomed in, and with no in-game FOV slider, you're stuck with an uncomfortably tight view. There is good news though, as this being an Unreal Engine title, you can make a very simple .ini file edit to basically tell the game to keep the correct aspect ratio scaling with our ultra-wide screens. So to do this, search Windows for percent local app data percent. In this folder should be a folder called Fortnite Game, Saved, Config, Windows Client. In here is a file called engine.ini. Open it in Notepad, and right at the bottom, add in the script engine section like you see on screen. This will be in the description for you to copy and paste in yourself to make life easier. Then save the file, close it, and off you go. Super easy. Many thanks to Shoku for bringing this to our attention. This will all be in the description for you to copy and paste in to make life easier. Then save the file, close it, and off you go. Super easy. Now the game will correctly maintain the right FOV level in all gameplay moments. I won't deny though, and this is going to be one of those rare moments I'll ever say this, but the game potentially has too high an FOV level for some people. I like a high FOV level already, and this seemed to be pushing it for me, so I'm sure there'll be some people who find it a bit too high. Really, we need an FOV slider implemented as a single FOV level is never the best way to do things. The HUD shifts beautifully to the sides of the screen. Screen effects generally use the entire screen space, however there is a weird damage effect that uses some small box center screen. It clearly is completely messed up due to the aspect ratio. It's small, but you do notice it. It's likely the sort of thing we'll see fixed in a future patch. I hope so anyway. Menus use the entire screen space nicely, stretching the background image to fill the screen which I support over black bars. Cutscenes are 16x9 with black bars and 21x9, good to see no stretching there. And lastly, loading screens use the entire screen space by stretching which is of course better than black bars. Performance wise the game is more demanding than you probably imagine, it certainly surprised me. So in 80% of gameplay you'll see no problem soaring into high frame rates on high graphic settings. I for one on a GTX 1080 Ti at 30 for 40 by 1440 had everything on highest possible settings, medium anti-aliasing, and maintained well in the 80 FPS range. However, there are very intense, effect-heavy moments when enemies spawn in from the storm. That will stress your GPU dramatically more than normal, and in these short moments my frame rate would dive into the 50s. It's quite the drop, and it is very noticeable. So when setting your graphics options, take into account this 20 to 30 FPS drop. Some of you might be fine dealing with these short moments of low FPS and so just leave your graphics settings like normal, but some of you might like a steady high FPS at all times, so maybe drop a few settings to prepare for those moments. General PC wise things are solid across the board, I saw no glitching, there is full controller and keyboard mouse support, Whilst the game annoyingly uses the Epic Games launcher, it is at least a good launcher that is hassle free, but yeah, it's still frustrating not using Steam. So gameplay wise, I'll start with the new Battle Royale game mode because it's a simple part of the game to quickly cover before we dive into what the rest of the game has to offer. So like I said, this is where there is a complete overlap with PUBG, not to mention a number of other Battle Royale games, and if you've ever played PUBG, which by Steam statistics you likely have, then you know how this game mode works. And when I mean this is essentially identical to PUBG on many levels, I do mean it. The few places it does differ though are there is no driving, as there are no vehicles in this game, there is no weapon customization like attachments, but there is a different weapon level complexity level instead, of course the art style to Fortnite is very different and nothing like that of the gritty PUBG, but the big difference is the building mechanic. It really is very cool having the ability to build anything you want in this mode, as we've never had that opportunity before. Things like getting trapped inside a building aren't the same because you or the enemy could just go and smash down the back wall and surprise the other enemy who's near the door. The possibilities are quite huge. 
Like you could create a huge base in the center of the closing circle to prepare for incoming enemy players. However, the building mechanic isn't used here that much because of the danger of taking your attention away from watching out for other players. Not being vigilant the whole time is dangerous. Overall though, I really enjoy playing this. It's a very good game mode. The mode has obviously been fine-tuned before it even arrived on Fortnite, but it works very well here. I would only say though that they must integrate some XP leveling or something into this, as currently there is no lasting effect. Once you finish, you don't level up or anything. It's simply a personal memory of how well you did, but I don't doubt these features will come soon. What's a surprise though is this game mode is free to all. You don't need the full game to be able to play it, which means a ton of people have been playing it. I'm sure this will bring in lots of microtransactions in the future, so I am worried about that admittedly, especially with how that would work alongside those who paid for the full version of the game, but only time will tell. The other game mode on offer is Save the World. This is the campaign basically, the bit you're paying for, and you're the person who is here to rid the world of this storm that has brought all of these zombie things. It's really a tower defense game, but more fleshed out with nice open levels that you're totally free to explore and gather resources in and find secret stuff in, all the whilst completing the final objective which is to activate a machine that you need to defend for a set amount of time against each wave of enemies. What you have to defend does vary, but the premise always remains the same. What really is epic about this though is the destruction and construction mechanics. To explain it in more depth than I did before, you can literally break anything other than the ground. Every house, wall, roof, bed, cupboard, etc, you name it, it can be smashed up. Doing this will grant you resources, which you can then use on all kinds of things like walls, floors, traps, etc. And all this stuff can be crafted from three different materials, stone, wood and metal, depending on the materials you've collected. This gives you a gigantic amount of freedom as to what you want to do to protect your objective. You also have tons of weapons that have all kinds of different upgrades and properties, and there is a deep set of upgrade trees that allow you to basically get more powerful. It's nothing that will confuse you too much, but it does clearly show how much depth there is to be found here. Another great aspect to the game too is the ability to play with up to three players online. Every mission for the most part can be played with other players online if you wish, and this is really good fun as you can explore and build together. The only problem I've found so far is the game is way too easy with four players. Not a single mission has been in the slightest bit challenging when I've played with others. The devs really need to dramatically increase the number of enemies that spawn, the difficulties of those enemies, and the directions those enemies are spawning from. For all the missions I've done so far, we might as well not have built anything and could just stand in the enemy spawn zone and annihilate every wave immediately. It's a shame because gameplay is superb otherwise. Guns are great fun to use, they have durability meters which means they break after so many uses which forces you to keep using varieties of other weapons. Graphics are lovely with the cartoon style to the whole game and of course we want to be forced to use this epic building mechanic. So yeah, all in all I've had a superb time with this. Fortnite still feels very early access in many ways. It's not far from feeling like a fully finished title, but there are certainly aspects to it that need more work. I can certainly give it a recommendation to play right now though, and you might as well try out the Battle Royale mode because it's free, so you have nothing to lose. I'm going to be keeping an eye out on the game and update this video when applicable, so check the description for an updated video link if I do update it. I'm going to give it a WAF score of 3 because the HUD and gameplay actually can go to 21 by 9 and the menus are 21 by 9 it's just really the cutscenes that are an issue, but I do want to see some native 21 by 9 support added in at some point soon. Anyway, I hope that gives you some information how the game runs at 21 by 9 Give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for future info. For another game at 21 by 9 head over to my channel, the WAF website. Hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.